Located in the heart of New York State, this region has always been a crossroads of transportation. The network of natural waterways linking central New York to the north, south, east, and west were commonly used hundreds of years ago by the Haudenosaunee or Iroquois, the Native Americans whose ancestral homelands covered the vast majority of what is now New York State. The trails that connected the homelands of the Six Nations intersected at the Central Fire, or capital, here at Onondaga, and became the region's first turnpikes when Europeans began colonizing this area. These early dirt roads provided direct routes, but were often muddy, rutted, and difficult to travel and maintain. To expand the network of waterways, the Erie Canal was completed in 1825, creating a man-made waterway 40 feet wide, 4 feet deep, and 363 miles long that connected cities from Buffalo in the west to Albany in the east. In the process, it ran right through Syracuse. That was no accident, since salt from the marshes around Onondaga Lake was one of the primary commodities that the canal was meant to transport. Salt was essential in preserving food in the era before refrigeration, and Syracuse provided the majority of America's supply of it during that time. It's the reason Syracuse is known as the Salt City. The Erie Canal was the country's first superhighway and enhanced the transport of goods, services, and people resulting in a social, economic, and spatial mobility that built cities all along the canal and beyond. However, in the winter months when the canal was frozen, slower and more cumbersome land transportation had to be used. Railroads would help land transportation make a giant leap forward. In 1839, steam-powered locomotives began rolling into Syracuse, and by the 1860s, rails superseded canals as the preferred method of transportation. Syracuse had the distinction of being known as the city with trains running down the middle of its streets. Trains carried freight and passengers year-round at higher speeds and greater load capacities than canal barges, and Syracuse was a major hub of the rail network. Due to the confluence of water, land, and rail routes, large numbers of migrants from other cities and immigrants from other countries began to settle here. By the turn of the century, Syracuse was one of the largest manufacturing cities in the country and a hotbed of entrepreneurial activity. It went from being America's largest supplier of salt to the nation's largest producer of everything from typewriters to church candles, and from soda ash to forging hammers. Syracuse's John Wilkinson invented the air-cooled engine for automobiles and partnered with a local aluminum die-cast producer to establish the Franklin Automobile Company in 1902. The automobile launched a revolutionary era of ground transportation and altered our very landscape and economy with roads, highways, and the many services and amenities that lined each route. With the completion of New York State's highway system, Syracuse was, once again, a central intersection. The Franklin Automobile's air-cooled engine became a model for early airplane motors, eventually serving as the basis for the Air-Cooled Motor Company, which made engines for aircraft. Air travel marked one of the greatest technological advancements of the modern age. Charles Lindbergh landed his air-cooled Spirit of St. Louis here in Syracuse shortly after his famous transatlantic flight in 1927 but early aviators and businesses in the local area were already shaping the future of this remarkable industry. Over the ensuing decades, our region made impressive contributions to aviation history, which you'll learn about in this museum. Now in the 21st century, Syracuse continues its proud tradition of aviation innovation and technology, becoming a leader in fields like unmanned aerial systems, radar, and runway lighting, while continuing to maintain its role as a crossroads of transportation.